Hello and welcome to the New Testament Daily with me, Jerry Dearman, where we read and talk through a chapter of the New Testament every single day. I'm glad you're here because reading God's Word daily will change your life. You can also help others find out about this resource and stay in the Word daily when you click like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or share this link with others. So let's pray and then we'll jump into God's Word. Father, thank you so much for the precious, written, inspired, living Word of God. And I pray that by the Holy Spirit, each of us would hear exactly what you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, here we go, Colossians chapter four. And Paul, the apostle, is writing to the church at Colossae, and he says this, Masters, now of course he's picking up on a whole theme from a, a process or a continuum from the previous chapter where he said, wives, husbands, children, fathers, bond servants, and now he gets down here to masters. We would equate that to be bosses, people who have authority, people who have people employees working for them and such. Masters, give your bond servants what is just and fair. So notice that the Bible, we could say Paul, but it's really the Holy Spirit, God. God is going down and saying, it doesn't matter what your status is on earth here. It doesn't matter whether you are uh, on the lower socioeconomic scale or whether you're all the way at the top in the top 1%, as people say, of income, and you're very fabulously wealthy and you have authority and many possessions, uh, which, by the way, Jesus warned that it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven because you tend to depend on those. But notice he's hitting every class of society, every gender, uh, every role that is played, no matter what the role is, there is a kingdom way, there is an obedient way, there is a God-honoring way to play that role. And once again, he comes all the way up to masters, those of you who were in charge. In other words, if anybody has the freedom to violate these things without consequence or apparent consequence, it would be the masters, it would be those at the top of the food chain, so to speak. But he says, hey, don't you be like that. No, we're children of God. We act like God. So masters, give your bond servants, give your employees, your those people that are under you, give your bond servants what is just and fair. See, this is the heart of God. This is the integrity of God. Give them what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Oh, this is huge. He's saying, hey, remember, you are a master, but you have a master. And the way that you treat those people below you, your father will treat you. And so, verse 2, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. So continue earnestly in prayer. Continue earnestly in prayer. And so this is something that our flesh doesn't normally do, but we, from our spirit inside, we need to press ourselves and say, I need to pray, and I need to pray earnestly and be vigilant in my prayer, in my belief that God is answering my prayers. I need to be vigilant. And he goes on to say, uh, with thanksgiving, meanwhile, verse 3, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Now, I love the vulnerability of Paul. Yes, the Holy Spirit is inspiring Paul to write this, but Paul is being very vulnerable, and he's saying, make sure to be praying earnestly, and, and then he, he'll say, and he did this in Ephesians 6 too, and pray for us, pray for me, because I'm tempted not to preach boldly, not to preach forthrightly as I'm supposed to preach. I'm tempted to hold back, to pull punches, so to speak, to not speak the full truth. And so he says, pray for me that I will also uh, do what I'm supposed to do. And he goes on to say, uh, meanwhile, praying also for us, and then coming down to verse four, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Verse five, watch this, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside. Now, what does that mean? Outside of the body of Christ, unbelievers, walk in wisdom, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time. Well, why is that? Well, because uh, people on the outside may take advantage of you more than people on the inside. 
I know what some people would say, oh, I've had more problems with Christians than I have anybody else. Okay, well, that may be true. But nonetheless, true believers who walk in obedience to God will not be near as much of a problem for you, should not be, as an unbeliever who does not have God's values, who don't share God's uh, ethics and such. And so he said, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. In other words, realizing that the time is slipping away until the end of the age, and you don't have a moment to waste doing the wrong thing, redeeming the time. So he goes on to say now, let's see, redeeming the time. Uh, verse 6, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Let your speech always be with grace. Just that one phrase, let your speech always always be with grace. I don't know about you, but my speech has not always been with grace. Sometimes I'm surprised at the, the tone that can come out if I get tired or in the flesh. And he said, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, seasoned with salt. Well, this would refer back to us being the salt of the earth. In other words, having the flavor of the kingdom of God on our tongue, in our tone, in the way we talk. Uh, and so it says, let your speech always be, season, se always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Each person may need to be answered in a different way, but everybody ought to get the same grace and everybody ought to receive the seasoning of the kingdom of God. Verse 7, Tychicus, my beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. With an SMS, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you? He said, I'm sending these two men to be with you. They will make known to you all the things which are happening here. Verse 10, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. Now, I love this because uh, this Mark is the very man, the cousin of Barnabas, that uh, caused a dispute between Paul and Barnabas in the book of Acts. And the dispute was so strong that they decided to separate from one another. And Barnabas chose his cousin Mark because he wanted to give him another chance because Mark quit early on the previous missions trip. And Paul was upset about that, didn't want to trust him again. But Barnabas said, let's take him. He'll be useful. Well, Paul said no. And that dispute became so sharp that Paul chose Titus and went on the missionary journey. And the book of Acts followed him. And Barnabas chose Mark. And they went together to do a ministry trip. So it goes on to say in verse 11, And Jesus, who is called Justice, uh, these, and he's talking about people who, uh, our greeting. Uh, he said, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. So he's allowing these others to greet the church at Colossae. But he said, these people have been a comfort to me. These are partners in the faith. These are people that stay right with me and encourage my heart. Verse 12, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ, greets you, uh, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear witness, I bear him witness, that he has a great zeal for you, and those who are of Laodicea, and those who are of Hierapolis. Uh, and so uh, Laodicea was a city very close by, and uh, Likely, Hierapolis was as well. Verse 14, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Now, who is Luke? Well, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So Luke wrote the third gospel in our New Testaments, and Luke was a traveling partner with the Apostle Paul, and he was documenting the book of Acts throughout the life and ministry of Paul, at least that, that history of Acts. So it says... Uh, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphos and the church that is in his house. So notice that churches were in homes back in these days. 
And verse 16, now when this epistle is read among you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans. Why? Because it was close by. And so they had similarities of uh, weaknesses and uh, needed similar exhortation. So he goes on to say, and that you likewise read this epistle, read the epistle from Laodicea. So not only Paul said, read this letter to the Laodiceans, but the letter that I wrote to the Laodiceans, make sure to read that letter to all the Colossians. And then uh, verse 17, and say to Archippus, I love this verse, and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. Oh, let me tell you, friend, this is for you and this is for me. Uh, say to Archippus, but God is saying, no, say to you, and he'll call you by name. Take heed to the ministry which you received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. If you don't take heed to it, it'll never be fulfilled. You have to take heed to it. You have to go after it. You have to you know, give it all you've got to be able to fulfill it. And so take heed. I'm saying this to you prophetically. Take heed to the ministry which you received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. So he goes on to say, this salutation by my own hand, Paul, remember my chains, grace to you, or grace be with you, amen. So Paul saying, remember my chains. Paul saying, don't forget about me now. Don't forget what I am going through, being chained up for the sake of the gospel. Don't forget that. I want you to remember how I have such love for you and a heart to minister to you that I'm even going through arrest and chains to be able to get that gospel to you.